as chairman of the Sanborn Regional School Public uh, Board Public Relations Com uh, Subcommittee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to the executive order 202004, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. <clears throat> However, in accordance with the emergency order, I am confirming we are utilizing Zoom for this electronic meeting. All members of Sanborn Regional School Board Public Relations Committee have the ability to communicate during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to listen and if necessary participate in this meeting through dialing the following phone numbers 1-646-558-8656 meeting id 5951-8587-4223 uh, uh, or by click uh, clicking on the following web as uh, address www.youtube.com slash s uh, c slash s r s d m e e t i n g videos we previously gave notice to the public of the necessary information for accessing <coughs> including how to uh how to access the meeting using zoom or telephone instructions have been provided on the website of sanborn regional school district wwsau17.net if any pro anybody has a problem, please call 978-482-7394 or email the help desk at sau17.net. In the event of a public unable to access the meeting, the meeting will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. And let's start the meeting with a roll call in attendance. So. Let's see, we have Charles. Here. Huh? I'm yeah, I'm at home on my front desk. I'm on my front porch. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy? Tammy Mahoney, I'm in my home. Uh, there's no one around at the moment, but family members are in the house, or my husband is anyway. And she has a kitty, so watch out for the kitty. And my cat, but she's, I don't know where she is, so. <laughs> and my name is Larry Heath. And I'm at home in my uh, office. Thank so. you. Okay, Tom. I'll turn it over. Yeah, I, I just wanted to check in with you all about, you know, we've been doing a lot of communicating about the reopening of school to the community. And, and um, you know, we grudgingly are sending out a, another brief survey about busing on Friday. Because we understand that people have survey burnout and I, I do as a parent in my own community, I, I don't, this isn't unique to us that we're asking a lot of information. We need accurate information to plan accurately and it's super complicated. So we, we feel that um, we, you know, we can't, we can't under communicate, but we can also hit a saturation point. So I just wanted to check in with the committee and see if there was anything that you all felt that the, the district could be communicating. So for example, Tammy, I, I received your feedback about the bus routes yesterday. <coughs> and, and I did, um, when we send out the survey about the bus routes, we're going to explain that the bus routes are longer than we anticipated because we can only put 20 to 25 students on a bus with the social distancing. So okay. people, not about the, <coughs> we may run, excuse me, we may run another bus run later, but we're working that out. First, we need to see how many people are actually going to use the bus because we put it in our plan that the more people who can transport kids themselves, the better off they are. So we expect a, a very low ridership and, 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 you know, that is true in most communities right now is a lot of folks are pairing up with other parents and just driving their kids to and from school. Um, so that will go in the, the survey on Friday, kind of an update on, on what's going on and, and that we're gonna look at the bus routes again once we get the survey data. Um, is there anything that you as a committee feel like we could, or could the board send a letter to the community about what's going on? Because part, really in my mind, this, this community, a big, this, this group, this 
subcommittee is kind of about board communication. And one thing we've done in the past is we've done a really good job of kind of including more information in the um, the annual report, which is going to come up, you know, that conversation yeah. will come up in December. And we've done a good job of, of kind of coordinating at times letters that might go in the paper, but the, the board decided that they, they didn't want to give this committee authorization to write letters for the board without the board reading and going through it all. And, and I, I understand that that's cumbersome and you can write letters on your own as board members, you know, individual as people and not speaking for the board. But I just wanted to check in with you all and see if there's any feedback about what we could do better or differently. I feel like we're almost over communicating and that might be the feedback. But anyway, I'll turn it back over to you, Larry. That's that was the purpose of the meeting. OK, anybody have anything to say? I have heard that boy, this most uh, I've heard anybody talk about the school. That was the only comment that I've heard. It wasn't negative. It wasn't positive. It's just a statement. Yeah. Demi, how about you? you uh, you're my go-to person for everybody. Um, I, you know, my, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm hearing pretty much what you guys are hearing from Eve through emails. I think people are you know, just anxious to have school open. Um, I'm not sure, I mean, the school put out some, the district put out some communication when we voted to open the school mm -hmm. to go back to in-person learning. I don't really like the term open the school. The school has been open right. the whole time. Right. Uh, I agree in with person. you there too. <laughs> um, This is something that I've been thinking about is, uh, since Tom gave me the heads up that he'd like to have this, is that all we are really acting as right now is a sounding board for Tom to make sure we haven't sent something out wrong to the public. Is that essentially what we're being used for, Tom? Yeah, I, I just felt like it was important for me to check in with the public relations committee because it is a public relations nightmare. It, it really is. I mean, we can't win. We've got... People yeah. on one side of the scale, as Gene, um, Jamie put it perfectly this summer on July 27th or whatever, he said, at one end of the spectrum, we have sheer terror. And at the other end of the spectrum, we have people like if it's zero to 100, one end is sheer terror. The other end at the 100 level is um, that they feel like it's fraud. Right. And then you have people that are at 120 and negative 20 that are just and then you have some people at the 50 level that are kind of like, yeah, OK, this isn't good. We need to be safe and careful, but we can probably figure it out and, and be responsible. And I'm, I, I can't, the, the, no, no school district has been able to make everybody happy. No matter what decision we make, 30% of people are going to be unhappy. I received a slew of emails today from one parent that is absolutely livid that we're asking kids to wear masks. I can't, you know, I can't, I can't make everybody happy. And, you know, we've got, um, We've got staff that want the kids back and we've got staff that are very nervous and that's the same spectrum and it's the same everywhere. So I, I've kind of taken the tack that like, I'm going to use data as much as possible to make rational decisions and justify them based on the information that we have available today and then live with the result. Right. And that that's, and that's kind of my message to the community. I think that the video that I did um, before we had the board meeting helped people to hear the tone of it. And, and I, I will do another one this next week, just kind of saying, you know, um, hey, everyone, you know, we, we, we're, we're getting ready to open and this isn't going to be smooth. Like the start of school is never smooth, right? The, the bus runs are always tricky the first week of school. Let's add on top of that a pandemic and a complete district reorganization. We are going to have problems with bus runs, drop offs and pickups. We may have to look at routes for when people drop things off drop kids off or other items at the schools because the parents aren't really supposed to go in the schools now. I mean, it really is um, impossible for us to anticipate all of the different issues that may arise. But I just wanted to kind of say to all of you, those are the things that I'm thinking about for this next round, which is, you know, it, it, it's, this is, I don't want anyone to think that it's going to be perfectly smooth. And it doesn't mean that we haven't worked really hard or thought about it at length. It means that we 
as a, as a district are facing a nearly impossible task and we are doing it. We're going for it. We're, 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 we're trying to help kids the best we can. And I mean, the difference between the way remote learning was this spring and the way it is now is night and day. It's still not as good as regular school. It never will be. And no one thinks it will be, but at least we're trying. And when we go to in-person school, it's not going to be the way it was last year. School's taken a step backwards by 25 years. Everyone's going to be sitting in a row looking forward six feet away from one another. I mean, that it's not. The kids at my son's school say it's not fun. They only go two days a week. It's it's just not the same. And and so I guess what I was wondering from you is, are those were the talking points that I was thinking of coming into this meeting. Do you feel like those are important things to share with people? Do you have any other ideas? I just wanted to check in, check in with my team before I go into this, you know? What, what do you think? <clears throat> Such a Charlie? Oh, Charlie? you're talking to me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, first of all, on page seven of the Carriage Town News, there's an article that says school board votes back to school. Uh, and it's put out by Newton Kingston Taxpayers Association. I have I got to be honest, I haven't read it, but I'm expecting that they kind of like laid it out like we laid it out. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is I was over to the school today, the, uh, the Memorial School with the fire department when they were doing their fire safety. And it seems that we don't have really a lot of big problems. I think there was like four or five issues and they're all minor, uh, which can be taken care of. So if, if that helps, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying that we're kind of, we're ready, right? Like the buildings right. are ready. We moved the whole office at Memorial. It's all moved to the front of the building and ready to go. It took right. Months. Right. And, and Thanks, the class, Charlie, I'll add that. The, te the teachers right now are just sitting back waiting to get the numbers so they can set up their seating mm -hmm. because we figured it out. I think that could like have 22 or 24 or something like that in the classroom. I'm, don't quote me on that. And most of them are running 20 to 21 right around there. And they have no problem setting the, the desk up. They're just waiting. Yeah, but we're in good shape. And they, they, yeah, they it's in real good shape. Yep. Thanks, Charlie. That's really helpful. Yeah. Yep. yep. I guess I wish, I wish we, I would like to emphasize to people that they do have concerns. Maybe we could just reiterate who they should call. Yeah. Um, and not, you know, the school principals or what, you know, maybe they don't know. Maybe it's not, the information doesn't feel as accessible to them to, you know, when they see a bus route that isn't what they expect. There actually are steps that they can take to let us yeah. know and maybe we can help them fix it. I finally got one email about a bus route today. I was <laughs> happy about that. I did forward it to Matt Angel. And uh, I did explain to people that the bus routes have been completely redone and all the stops because they hadn't been redone in 10 years. And so some people who had a stop right in front of their house are not going to have a stop in front of their house anymore. And they have to, they have to understand that, that the district is not obligated to do front yard pickups. But that doesn't mean that there aren't situations that we'll look at and review. In every case, we look at case by case, and we are happy to help. And, and we always check every one of them out. Uh, Matt has gone and observed traffic patterns, worked with the police. And there have been some times that we have changed a stop. And there have been a few times where we have not changed a stop. So I think that that's what they got to tell us, right? They got to come to us. We can't help. And it'll be the same with the opening of schools. I, I hope they go to their principals and follow that chain of command, right? Is that, is that what we would want them to do? Uh, bus runs go straight to Matt. And so we, want, we are asking the public to email the business administrator if they have yeah. questions about bus routes? Yes, you can email the bus company, and then if it doesn't get resolved, go to Matt. So mm -hmm. the actual chain is the bus company first, and then Matt. Thank you. Could I get you to put that out into a, um, a Facebook page? Sure. Because I know that I get a lot of comments from people and they see that from you. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to do that. I'll, I'll put a little note out saying, hey, if you have any questions or concerns about the bus routes, please please email the uh, uh, the bus company. And then if you can't get it resolved, let Matt Angel know at mangel at sau17.net. 
Sure. I'll, I'll share that on the usual pages when I see yes. that. Yes. In fact, Tammy, I should have done that this morning. I was just so busy. I haven't had a chance. That's a, a normal a normal thing that I do is put it right out there and get it out there. I, I, I actually get expected my in inbox to be full of bus stuff this morning, <laughs> but it was not. So you never know, you know, people get frustrated and then they kind of go on to the next thing sometimes. And um, busing is going to be tricky because having students one per seat or two, if they're in their, the family is going to be an interesting process, you know? So I hope that parents um, as much as possible do transportation themselves, because that really does make a big difference with this situation we're in. And that's all I had, guys. If you don't have anything else, I'm Tammy. Did you have something else? Where you can you include that, like with with this whatever you got to post? Can you just include a little explanation, whatever what you just said was sure. fine? Sure, I'll draw that up right now. That and under this, um, you know, COVID situation, what what differences we're making, what changes we're making? Yeah, yeah, that's not a problem at all. Great. Well, Charlie, you got anything else that you would like to add? No, I'm pretty good. I have nothing either, so if nobody right. objects. And, and Tammy and I chat sometimes. She helps me, you know, and, and sometimes Dawn chimes in if I need a hand too, and that's fine. You know, if people know what's going on and I can nip it quickly, I'd much rather do that and deal with it. I didn't engage in the busing last night, Tammy, because I, li I like to follow sometimes the rule of 48. Right. The first 24 hours, people are really upset and it takes 48 hours for the endorphins to come down in their body. So I was kind of giving people a chance to either come to me or calm down because I didn't know if they'd be rational. So it's probably good that I put something out there tonight. Yeah. 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 All right. I'll do that right now. Thanks a lot, guys. It's great to see you all. I appreciate the help. We have um, something else on the agenda here about our next meeting date. Oh, OK, great. What's the next meeting? Well, that date? Is, uh, uh, Veterans Day. Uh, Actually, why don't we go on the same principle we're doing now? If Tom has something, we'll call a meeting and have Phyllis uh, do it. I mean, uh, we're just, we're handling it as it comes up. Well, I'm going to need a meeting in December for sure, because we're going to have to work on the, uh, um, the, the book, right, Tammy, that we did? Um, the town report? The annual report? Oh, yeah. yeah, the annual report. So why don't we definitely plan to meet? And I might need a meeting in December, depending on how things are going with the, you know, the cases and everything. Um, if, if we have a problem, I'm going to want to talk with the three of you about that, right? About how to talk about it. So, so I'm, I would think that, uh, were we shooting for December 16th? Was that the correct? Yes. Nope. No. Uh, the if we skip a November meeting, yeah, the calendar is really weird this year. Oh, yeah, we were on for Wednesday, December 9th at 4.30. That works perfectly for me. It seems far away, but when you look at the... December, yeah. So we're November, skipping November? We're not going to have... Yeah, November only has 15 school days. Unless there's something that pops up, I'm good. December 9th? Yep, December 9th. And that will be, well, the agenda item, Larry, would be, uh, you know, c COVID communication update, because I, I like to hear from you. But then underneath that, we need to also plan time to talk about uh, information for the annual report. And, and if you guys could each take a look at what we did last year to kind of get caught up to speed, that would be great. Already. Is that agreeable good. with everybody? Yep. Okay. Thank, thanks, guys. It's great to see you all. I really appreciate it.